Well, thank you very much. Um, it's always a pleasure to be back to IMPA and back to Rio de Janeiro. So thanks the, to the organizer for the invitation. So <clears throat> yesterday, uh, Rovella recall that it was his first time that he speaks in this auditorium after it was called Mañez Auditorium. So I recall now that my first talk uh, in an international conference was in 97, and uh, so it was in this auditorium, and it was already called Mañez Auditorium. So corollary, I am much younger than yeah. Ravella. <laughs> so um, I apologize because I won't give any new result. And uh, also what I'm going to, to speak uh, is kind of all problems and folklore problems. It has to do what uh, Lorenzo Diaz talked yesterday or I think that what uh, Enrique will talk. Um, but uh, so let's recall what the stability conjecture is. So if F is CR structurally stable, F is CR structurally stable, if and only if F is axiom A plus a transversality condition. Uh, Martin, excuse yeah. me. Sure. Uh, uh, people are asking if, uh, if you could write uh, bigger. bigger. Oh, okay. Thank Sorry. you. Where are the eraser? <coughs> okay. I will try. So F is structurally stable if and only if <laughs> F is axiom A and a transversality condition. And also F is CR, sorry, CR, CR omega stable, if and only if, F is axiom A plus no cycle. Okay, <coughs> so see, things seem to be very different depending on R. So in the C1 case, these conjectures that was stated by Pallis and Smain, in the C1 case is known everything is regarding stability it's known in the C1 case. In the CR case, this is almost, a, almost nothing is known. And uh, so what are the, the difference between C1 and CR with R? bigger or equal than two. In the C1 case, we know perturbation techniques that these are not known in the CR case. On the other hand, in the CR, the CR 
dynamics is more uh, uh, rigid or restricted. So, so what kind of things that we know in this case that is not known in that case? For instance, closing lemma. This is known in the C1 case, and it's not known in the CR case. So this is a, a very important technique. The connecting lemma is already known in the C1 case. And in the CR case, something is known. And I mean by that, that <coughs> with some supplementary hypothesis, something can be said. Another important ingredient in the C1 case is the Frank's lemma. Which is, of course, is known in the C1 case, but it's false in this case. <coughs> So, uh, and also, so, yes, um, Frank's lemma is that um, if you have a periodic orbit, you look to the differential at each point. And then you can perturb the differential here. So you take linear maps which are close to the differential the, to the tension map at each point of the periodic orbit, and then you realize this as a diffeomorphisms having the 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 periodic orbit equal, but the differential now is L0, L1, L2, so on, okay? So um, what, uh, what was useful or why Franks did this lemma was that to show that if you have periodic orbits uh, that uh, the um, Lyapunov exponent is close to zero, then you can create a non-hyperbolic periodic orbit. Okay? So, and this is false. This is followed from, some, from a result by Enrique and myself that you can have uh, periodic orbits with Lyapunov exponents close to zero, but you cannot uh, perturb them to, to have uh, a non-hyperbolic periodic orbit. Okay, so <coughs> so it seems that uh, the the CR stability conjecture is much more difficult, and so it's it's almost a forgotten problem in dynamics. That I mean, people doesn't work on it. Uh, for instance, we know everything in the C1 case, but we don't even know if a CR st structurally stable diffeomorphism has a periodic orbit. So, let me also put this in terms of ergodic measures. So, let F M via diffio, and so let's denote that M E of F, the set of ergodic measures, ergodic probability measures, and so <coughs> if we have new and uh, ergodic measures. We say that mu is hyperbolic. 
if all Lyapunov exponents are different from zero. So So this is a first problem that I w would like to state. It's what can we say about an hyperbolic ergodic measure? You know that when he, we, we have a, a a uh, periodic hyperbolic periodic orbit this orbit persists under perturbation has a continuation on for diffeomorphisms nearby if you have a hyperbolic set then also this hyperbolic set has a continuation so that's mu hyperbolic ergodic hyperbolic measure has have a continuation and this should be understood in a broad sense I mean um, what does it mean to have a continuation so we should understand in which sense. Maybe not always, so when it has, or uh, also in which setting. And uh, of course, here I will ask for r bigger or equal than two. It seems that in R equals one. This may not be the case. A hyperbolic measure can disappear. But what about uh, in CR? So, for instance, how we could understand this when we have a hyperbolic measure? Then we know that the support. Of mu, this is a result by Katok, um, is contained in a homoclinic class. So the homoclinic class has a continuation in a neighborhood of the diffeomorphisms. This has a continuation. So does there exist a hyperbolic measure in this continuation that in some sense reflects the original one? This is something I, I don't know. So let me also define the following set. E of M to be the set of diffeomorphisms sorry the interior of the set the interior of the set such that all ergodic measure is hyperbolic So here is the natural question. So is F R E of M equals to the set of axiom A plus no cycles? So this is the question that I will look at it if I will 
try to understand the stability conjecture. I will start for the diffeomer films were all hyperbolic ergodic measures. Uh, the interior of the set of diffeomer films having all hyperbolic ergodic measures. The thing is that if it is uh, CR structurally stable, we don't know if there is a periodic point. But for this kind of, for these diffeomer films, we know a lot. We know that, first of all, the set of measures is not empty. And so by Katok, we have that the periodic points are dense in the support, in the closure of the support of all ergodic measures. So we have a lot of structure to start with. Um, so, uh, and now you can start playing with the, this question, but well, let me make the following definition. Let's lambda f will be the union of the support okay so I assume that all ergodic measures are hyperbolic. What can we say about lambda f? So <coughs> it's not true that if we have all ergodic, all ergodic measures are hyperbolic, it's not true that this set or that f is axiom A. So the, the first example, or this is an example that many of you already know. It was made by Pallis. So you have this situation. picture that many of you already know. <coughs> the limit set here is hyperbolic, but the non-wandering set is not. So this is uh, an example by Pallis. So if this limit set is hyperbolic, then all ergodic measures are hyperbolic, of course. But um, the no wandering set is not hyperbolic, and so F is not axiom A. But indeed, there are other examples. This is an example of, started with the thesis of Isabel Rios, but it was Gauss, uh, Dussat, and Rios. Something like this. We have a square, and you have the image of this square is something like this. So when you look to the maximal invariant set in the square, so, and it's not hyperbolic because here we have a tangency, but indeed all hyperbolic ergodic measures, or 
sorry. All aerobatic measures are hyperbolic. And uh, so the, the thing is that hyperbolic measures don't see this tangency. So I will ask you to more examples. Pardon? more? <laughs> um, so, also we can uh, ask something uh, regarding the closing lemma in terms of ergodic measures. Uh, so let's say fr0 of m will be the interior of the set of F such that all ergodic measures has as zero the epinomial exponent. So this is Yes, F R zero of M empty. Okay. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yes. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm? I mean, if the CR closing lemma holds this, the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, but the thing is that uh, in this question, it's not only that F has all ergodic measures hyperbolic, but any perturbation of or any CR perturbation of it has all the ergodic measures hyperbolic. So, um, indeed, for one dimensional maps, um, it's, it's known, and the answer is yes. This is something that Contreras did it a long time ago. So, 
So now, now we, that we have this question, we can start playing with and do other questions that has to do with, with this. So for instance, which is another problem, or type of problem, assume that f belongs to fre of m. So is the set of sinks finite, or the set of repellers also finite. Yes, yes, yes. Huh? Yes. Hmm? That uh, maybe there, is, there was some condition in containers, but if all ergodic measures, the container has all, or it is actually may, or you can have a, a zero. Um, you have no exponent, ergodic measure. Um, so then we can just start playing with, for instance, let the H a homoclinic class. And then, so. Uh, you have uh, many periodic orbits related, homoclinically related in the class, or the stable and stable manifold. And you ask, and so assume that the angle between the stable and the stable of the periodic points or the homoclinic orbits is not bounded. Not bounded away from zero. Then, is it true that we can create um, non-zero, sorry, a zero, the yep, of exponent? ergodic measure indeed uh, or you can ask if you can have a homoclinic tangency if you can have a if you have a homoclinic tangency then you will have a uh, you can create a zero Lyapunov exponent ergodic measure because when you unfold the homoclinic tangency then you have this zero Yep, no exponent measures. And uh, what about the following? So here you have a homoclinic class. And assume that the angle between the stable and it's stable, is bounded away from zero. And assume that F also belongs to a par E of F. So then the homoclinic class is hyperbolic. You know that if <coughs> if these two spaces, subbundles, are various continuously, and f is in up or e of m, then uh, is hyperbolic. 
a trivial argument. So, but um, I think that uh, Enrique will speak on the, what happened when you have this uh, robustly bounded away from zero in some uh, setting, for instance, the dissipative setting. I think that Enrique, Alejandro, and uh, Sylvain has a result on, on this setting. So, okay. Whatever. What else? So I, I so you you can you 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 pick your favorite pr problem about stability and you can uh, state it in this kind of of setting about hyperbolic ergodic measures, but. Uh, I will try to to give um, some positive re results that it, that they are known. And so here's the problem that we would like to address. So assume that F belongs to this set of R E of M. And the number of ergodic measures is finite. Okay? So this is a very simple situation. We have just finitely many periodic orbits. They are hyperbolic, and these are the only ergodic measures. Okay, and this is the same for f and for all nearby diffeomorphisms f. So, as this implies, that f is action a plus no cycle. This seems to be um, a very basic question. And besides, uh, or in spite of the knowledge that we have on all the other questions that we have regarding CR stability, huh? well, uh, you know, um, maybe it's uh, not claiming the transversality, okay? But of course, it will be more smaller nearby. But, uh, but this is something that we can at least say in some situation. So, for instance, so this is kind of maybe folklore. If M is S2, then, uh, then it's true. Uh, no, it's actually is that you have just finitely many periodic uh, orbits. And this is the no wandering set. Okay, Morse's mail uh, uh, claims about the transversality of all uh, the stable and unstable manifolds. And, uh, mm -hmm. But you could you could you could you could have this this situation, and you have a connection between two saddles, for instance. Okay. So, <coughs> um, so, what's the problem 
if you want to attack this problem, it says, okay, here you pick a periodic point, say a saddle, okay? Here are the other periodic points, P1, P2, Pn, I don't know. So you know that all ergodic measures are hyperbolic and are concentrated on the periodic points, right? And you want to show that this is the non-wandering set. The thing is, if you have a point here, x, in the non-wandering set, f that does not belong to the, that this point x is not any one of the periodic points, then uh, you want to kind of create a cycle. And if you create a cycle, then uh, after perturbation, the set of periodic points explodes. So it's not, uh, won't be in this set. So, but the problem, so how can, how do you prove the, the for instance, the, the omega stability of when the limit set is hyperbolic and uh, and you have no cycles. That this point should go, the omega limit point of this should be one of these basic pieces. But here we don't have that. The problem is that this point could go and go and go nearby, I don't know. If you took the measure that you on the um, on the direct measures of the orbit of pieces of the orbit of X, then this measure will be concentrated here. But this does not say that the omega limit of X is a periodic orbit. Okay. So this is the the kind of problem that you have. For instance, when you take a periodic point P, you look to the unstable, and you want to see where the unstable manifolds accumulate. So the thing that you are in this set says that this should accumulate on the periodic orbits and should accumulate with the with big measure, but it's not says that it goes to this point, goes to one periodic orbit. So, what about in when M is the sphere? We will have this um, Robinson. Pixon CR connecting lemma. That means that so Robinson do it for fixed points and fixed Pixon for periodic orbits. So, but the thing is. You have P, a uh, hyperbolic fixed point set, and you have that the unstable manifold, in some sense, accumulates on the stable manifold. Then by a CR, and for, for any R, by a CR perturbation, we can create a homoclinic orbit. But this is just in the sphere, okay? And once you get that, you, you have that this should accumulate on other ones using prime, 
prime ends and so on and so on. This is something that you can do it here. But indeed, so I won't. I don't want to talk very much about it because I want to also show the following, which is truly general. And this is a result by Hayashi based on Magnus C2 connecting lemma. So, and I just stated as that F is C2, and every C2 perturbation is, has all hyperbolic ergodic measures, and uh, it's finite. F is action A. Plus no cycle. Okay, so this is something that we know. C2, at least. And uh, so this is based on. So let me. Indeed, uh, is more general. Indeed, what is true is uh, suppose that f belongs to f two e of m, and assume that lambda f, the set of Assume that this set is hyperbolic, isolated. Then F is action A plus no cycles. Okay. So when this follows. From Magnus C2 connecting lemma. So let me state it. I assume that we have lambda. Yes. Um, basic hyperbolic set. Assume that you have some x that does not belong to lambda. And assume that you may have some sequence of measures nu k of the following form, 1 over mk from j equals 0 to mk minus 1 delta f j x and assume that this converge to mu and that mu of lambda is positive then one of the following two things happens. Or we can create or we can create a homoclinic orbit associated to lambda. Or we can perturb so that x belongs to the stable manifold of lambda for some perturbation, g, of course. Okay? And this is uh, 
I'm sorry. Yeah. C2 diffusion. And the perturbations here are C2 close. Okay. So, uh, what's the main I won't have enough time to, to explain my yes idea, but suppose that you have here something like this, P, stable, and unstable, and you have some point X here, and you know that this sequence of measures converts to mu, and mu of the fixed point P is positive. So this says that so this may go here, go here, and so on. But the thing is that um, something like this should happen. At some point, it goes very deep, and then goes back, maybe enters again. And then the next time, it goes also very deep. So this, this is, this is something that you have with this hypothesis that mu of lambda is bigger than zero. That you have one, you at some point you you go very deep, close to the periodic point P, and then. Uh, and, and then the next, you see, you look to the next time that goes very deep, and in the for the intermediate values, then you have enough space here, so you can just with one, um, with one, with two jumps, you can create a homoclinic orbit. So um, the thing is, can we improve this? Manier connecting lemma, at least in the situation where the, we have just finitely many hyperbolic er ergodic measures. Uh, so, for instance, if the measure of lambda is not just positive, but it is one, maybe this says that you really go to have to go very deep. But uh, but uh, some estimations may show that it is worthless to do it. Other uh, maniers uh, um, do the perturbation just in say two jumps. Maybe you may ask to spread the perturbation, but it seems that. You don't have enough time to do the perturbation for higher topologies, and uh, so. But uh, in this situation that we want to to ask for higher to topologies, uh, you may be. Or you can create a cycle, uh, and a homoclinic point, sorry. Or maybe you have this, which is these two, which are very close. And what I mean is, instead of making a, a homoclinic point, making a new periodic orbit. So this is something I don't know, but what I, what I ask is, this simple problem should be attacked. Or instead of two with r bigger or equal than two, than three, it says. And um, so it's kind of a, a, a challenge, and I ask you to do it for the next Balsan meeting. And um, 
I promise you a Talix whiskey distiller edition if you do it. So thank you very much for your attention.